Uh, and so this is our zero, zero point in our world. And we're going to go back into artwork, and we're going to create some animations. So it looks like the first thing I'm doing here is I'm going to select uh, the player walking animation, which is uh, f frames 4 through 11. And uh, I'm going to drag this into the scene. So as soon as you drag this into the scene, it's going to automatically ask you to create a new animation. So this is one thing to keep in mind if you're if you're trying to put a lot of sprites uh, on the on the screen. You can't um, you can't do it individually. As soon as you have multiple sprites selected, Unity automatically wants to turn that um, into a um, uh, Unity automatically wants to turn that into an animation for you. So in this case, what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new folder, um, and we're going to call this uh, animations. And in the animations, I'm going to create this individual animation called player walk animation. Oops, that's redundant. We'll get rid of that. And you'll see it's going to save it as a type anim. So we'll hit save. And now this automatically generated out an animation. If we were to run the game, you'll see that our little guy is going to walk, right? Now, what actually happens? So an animation is really this thing called an animator. An animator is a bundle or collection of frames. Uh, if we look in our animations folder here, you'll see uh, this is the actual animation itself. Um, this is the reference file for it from the sprite that we made. And if we were to click on this player and open up the, uh, the animation panel, you'll see that this is the animation that was built, right? So also, if we click on this player, you'll see here that we have a sprite renderer. This is what actually renders a sprite to the screen. Its default is going to be uh, player underscore four, because that was the first frame that we used when we dragged it down. And then here we have our animation controller, which is uh, player underscore four. And this is what manages the actual animation. So this is the animation. This is its controller, right? If we double click on this, uh, this controller, you'll see that we're taken to this animator panel. And the animator is a state machine. And as we start building out more and more animations, we're basically going to manage um, one state to another. And what are the triggers that allow you to go from walking to idle to stuff like that? Uh, new in, in Unity, and I don't know exactly what this is. I have to really look it up. There's now an entry point. So this wasn't here in Unity uh, 4. And basically, whenever the entry point exists, it, it automatically goes to whatever the default uh, animation state is. Uh, also, we can click on this state itself. And we can do some, uh, we can manipulate a few things. Like we can, um, uh, we can go in here and we can change its speed. A lot of this stuff is really built in more for uh, the 3D stuff. And if we were to double click on this uh, to the actual animation itself, you could see here that we can um, we can change uh, information about the loop. Uh, most importantly, sometimes like when you have idle animations, um, you're not going to want to have it loop, right? There's just no point to it. And it, another cool thing is that when you're running uh, the game, if you go into the animator while it's running, it'll show you as it goes through this entire cycle. Um, I don't think it does that in the spreadsheet. It just does it here. If we were to stop this, though, and go into the animator, uh, you could see that we can actually run the animation here and get a preview of it in the window. Uh, and I believe, yes, yeah, so in this case, it won't show you in the game. So these are the two ways to sort of test out uh, what your animations look like and what's going on. So going back to my notes, uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to create an idle animation. So, so one of the strange limitations inside of uh, Unity is that we actually can't just drag one sprite down and turn it into an individual frame of animation. So in order to do that, always make sure that you have the actual uh, player selected. Uh, before I forget, let me just call this player. And what I'm going to do is, having the player selected, going into the animation, I'm going to use the drop down and do create new clip. And this is going to allow me to manually create an animation. So there won't be a controller associated with it. So once you have a controller, the controller manages all the different animation states in that state machine uh, inside of the animator. 
what this is going to let me do is just keep adding new um, new animations. So a lot of times what I'll wind up doing is I'll just I'll set up one animation, like walk, for example, that I know has multiple frames. And then from there, I wind up building out uh, each other set of animations uh, manually. So let's uh, let's call this one uh, player idle animation and we'll save it here in the animation folder and you'll see now in the animation folder that we have our idle animation we have our walk animation but we only have this uh, we have this controller so I'm going to rename this uh, player animation controller so that it's just a little bit easier for us to understand what that is and now if we look in the animator here you'll see that we actually have two different states we have the player idle animation and the player walk animation um, but before we can really do anything, there actually isn't any, um, there isn't, there aren't any frames inside of this. So by default, um, when you drag animations onto uh, Unity, it creates a sample rate of 12. I just sort of go with that. Um, when you create a new animation from scratch, its sample rate is uh, 60. So I'm going to change this over to 12 real quick. Then the other good thing that you can do now is that we have this timeline is I can go into my artwork and uh, I'm just taking a look at what I need to do the first sprite. So I can basically drag this sprite uh, down into the timeline and now you'll see we're previewing this uh, at runtime um, that this is going to become a single frame animation. So if we play this nothing's really going to happen uh, back in the animator. Uh, we'll now have this frame, uh, which will be the single frame, and then we have this walk animation.